Hello everyone! Today we are going to discuss what is a visual merchandising planogram. A planogram is a visual plan which designates the placement of products on the shelves and the merchandising display fixtures of a retail store. The planogram is usually created by a visual merchandising employee or perhaps at times by a member of the merchandising or the marketing team. Historically, planograms have been uh, distributed in the forms of a schematic diagram or a drawing, but increasingly, in recent years, planograms have been managed by digital programs or computer-aided design software programs such as this one, Illustrator, and photographic images. Furthermore, planograms are being used to create consistency between store locations to provide proper shelf space allocation and to improve visual merchandising appeal as well as create product pricing suggestions. The ultimate goal of a planogram is to guide and to focus the in-store merchandising efforts in order to result in increased retail sales. Throughout the examples that I'm showing you, you can notice the difference between one planogram to another and that is because every single planogram has a different story to tell based on the, the merchandise that they carry and the type of store that they represent. Therefore, planograms are basically being used to create consistency between store locations, to provide proper shelf allocation, as well as to improve visual merchandising appeal and create product pricing suggestions. The ultimate goal of a planogram is basically to guide and to focus the in-store merchandising efforts to result in increased retail sales. The planogram is basically a uniform and detailed store layout. Um, and it really does help ensure that throughout the planning, um, you really do consider the design, the placement, the implementation of the merchandising plans, as well as the inclusion of shelf space and allocation of the merchandise. Planograms are generally distributed to retail stores in large retail chains at least once per quarter, um, as well as uh, by seasonal merchandise that is rotated into the product mix. A new planogram would also be distributed in order to showcase new products, to spotlight products during um, promotional campaigns, as well as to highlight slow-moving merchandise. The goal is to create displays that are visually appealing to customers and allow them to find, to compare, and to choose products very efficiently. In order to get started in creating a successful planogram, I've already provided you with the instructions as well as the uh, templates necessary for you to create one. From your first artboard in the artboard section of your panel view, you can see that um, this first artboard has a lot of information for you in terms of what kind of wall fixtures you could possibly provide um, or include in your planogram. Uh, what are some variations of folded merchandise and how that might look on your planogram? What are some variations and how side view uh, merchandise might look? As well as what are some variations of front view merchandise and how that might look like? On your second artboard, you can see that I've already provided you with planogram samples and these will include not only um, different um, uh, front view and side view of the merchandise, but I've also provided you with a uh, fashion template uh, where you might be able to uh, work closely. The goal here is to have you guys use one of these merchandise to recreate them, to reshape them in a certain way that makes sense for you and your stores, as well as for your planograms, and to include them in your final versions. For example, you could select this simple t-shirt, hold shift, size it up, reposition, Use the direct selection tool, zoom in to see the detail of your work, and then use the direct selection tool to recreate the shirt. By double clicking on each anchor point, you will be able to maneuver the lines and create the shirt that best works for you and your brand. After you have recreated the shirt, you can Find your life paint bucket tool, which is located under the shape builder. You can select a specific color from your swatches and color in the shirt. In your next artboard, I provided you with a sample creation and layout of the planogram and how it should look like for a menswear line. As you can see, the planogram is very cohesive. It has a story to tell. You can see that it is intended for a menswear line. And lastly, your Arbor 4 is going to be space for you and your teams to create 
um, a variation of your planogram. Please be sure to read the project requirements before you get started. For example, you need to know that before you get started, you need to think of a theme, of a color, season, and type of merchandise you would like to feature in your planogram. After you've created your design brief and worked on your parts 1 and part 2, you will be able to write a short summary of your concepts. Since this is a part of your group project, all team members must actively participate in the creation of the planogram. Please remember that the focus should be on the placement of the products and the shelves, as well as the merchandising display fixtures for maximum efficiency and effect on the customer. Your planogram should incorporate different colors, different patterns, as well as other visual merchandising materials and graphics that will help illustrate the idea and sell the merchandise. Another one of your requirements to, is to make sure that any borrow uh, fashion sketches must be altered to change their basic appearance. Once you're finished working on your planogram, you have to write a short concept statement explaining why you believe the planogram that you created is important and how your planogram visually is visually appealing to your customers and allows them to find, compare and choose products very efficiently. I would like to show you a few quick steps and reminders in terms of how you can work more efficiently. Please notice your layers and your artboards. Your artboards will have four different sections that have different content that will help you collaborate with your team members and create the best version of your planogram. Your layers, on the other hand, will also have four different sections. When creating a complex artwork, um, it is basically really challenging to keep track of all of the different items that you would like to create and insert into your document view. Smaller items so sometimes might get hidden under larger items, um, and therefore selecting artwork um, can become really difficult at times. So these layers right here will basically provide a, a way for you to manage all of the items that make up your artwork. Um, think of the layers basically as a clear folder that contains a lot of different artwork. Um, so if you reshuffle certain folders, um, you can change the, the basically the stacking order of the items in your artwork. The structure of the layers is basically such that the document um, can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. However, this new layer right here, which is called Visual Merchandising Planogram, this one is reserved specifically for you. If you click on it, it'll make sure that every single thing you draw from now on will be recorded right here. Here's a quick example of how you can get started. From this point, I'm going to use the selection tool and select one of the items, drag them to the mannequin, Hold shift, size them up, zoom in for better view, and change the basic view. I can change the basic view of the merchandise by using the direct selection tool. If I zoom in, I can see that I have multiple different anchor points to work with. If I double click on one of them, I can drag it out and continue changing the shape. Please remember that you can always use the handlebar tools to further alter the shape by dragging inwards, outwards, up or down. From the pen tool, you can also use the add anchor point and delete anchor point to further manipulate the shape of the object. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and choose to um, delete an anchor point. I can then choose the direct selection tool and work with only one of the anchor points. After I've had an opportunity to alter the perfect merchandise, I can go ahead and draw a bounding box, right click and group the object in order to be able to transport it easily and apply different colors. From this point, I can use the life paint bucket tool, which is located under your shape builder tool, choose a color I would like to work with. And if a message like this shows up, please go ahead and click OK and then from the object pin, from the object menu, go ahead and click expand appearance a few times. A new window will show up. Make sure you select all of the options and click OK. At this point, you can reselect your object, choose your paint bucket tool, select the color you would like. You can either drag and drop the color, or you can click and release to color in. Another really interesting way to color in like this is to use patterns. You can find patterns online, insert them into Illustrator, adjust them, and then define them. Here are the steps to do that. Open a Google window, 
Type in a pattern or a keyword you're interested in. From the Tools panel, you can go ahead and say Usage Rights that are labeled for reuse and look for a clean pattern like this one. By right-clicking, you can go ahead and say Save Image As. Save it to your folder. At that point, you can go back into your Illustrator panel. File. Place. Uncheck Link and click Place. If the pattern is too big, simply hold Shift and scale it down. Once your pattern has been scaled down, you can go ahead and click on Objects, Pattern, and choose Make. You can click OK, and your pattern has been made. Go ahead and click Done. And as you can see, your pattern has new pattern has been saved in your swatches. I can now go ahead and select my pants, choose the pattern, click and drag. Now that my garment is altered and I can see that the pattern has been saved, I can go ahead and delete this image. As soon as you have had an opportunity to apply different colors and rearrange the basic shape of the merchandise provided here, you can go ahead and start working on the creation of your planogram. As soon as you're done creating your planogram, you can go ahead and file, save as, please be sure to save an illustrator copy. And as soon as you have saved an illustrator copy, you can save a second copy of Adobe PDF. At this point, you can go ahead and select the range. Instead of selecting all of the artboards, you can just go ahead and select the artboard that you have actually worked on, which is artboard number four. Click Save. 